In a wetland way out in the California desert, researchers have installed a 900-foot metal chute full of slimy green algae. It's part of an experiment to clean up polluted water, but scientists are also trying to turn the algae into a renewable source of fuel, and they're being bankrolled by a powerful backer, the Department of Energy. So there's algae everywhere. There's something like 100,000 different strains of algae in the world, and they adapt to whatever environment they're in. This is California's Salton Sea, an artificial lake that formed when an irrigation channel broke and overflowed in 1905. The lake is slowly drying up. And the only water flowing into it is agricultural runoff, which is polluted with fertilizers and pesticides. One of the few things that can thrive in these extreme conditions is algae. Ryan Davis is the head scientist overseeing the DOE's algae growing operation. Walk me through this process here. What exactly is going on? Today we're just harvesting biomass that has been growing over the past couple of weeks. We call paraphytic algae that are in the water around us. So it's ubiquitous algae that just will grow if you give them the right conditions. Does that make you algae farmers? How does <laughs> well, that work, like as a scientist? We call ourselves scum ranchers. The scum filters the water, removing agricultural residues that would have flowed from the wetlands around the algae farm into one of California's most toxic lakes. We're sourcing from the local wetlands here that are a part of essentially an environmental restoration project related to the salt and sea. So you're taking water from the wetlands, you're pumping it through here using solar power, mm -hmm. and then you're essentially using algae that just grows naturally in this kind of condition to clean that water. That's correct. The stuff that we don't want in the water is helping it grow. Exactly. The clean water, where does it go? It goes back into the wetlands. The DOE is calling this the Salton Sea Biomass Remediation Project, but it's interested in more than just cleaning a polluted lake. What the government really wants is a source of renewable energy, and it's spending 600000 a year on Salton Sea research. For the past year, Ryan's team has been harvesting algae, which is sent to Sandia National Laboratories, where scientists work to turn it into a high-quality fuel. It's early days for their research, but Ryan was eager to prove that algae fuel will burn. It burns. It burns. <laughs> it smells way better than gasoline, I have to say. Have you actually been able to try this out in a car? Like, have you driven a car? No, they've only been in test engines, but I really, really want to put this in a go-kart and do donuts in the parking lot. This is not the first time algae fuels have been tested. Venture capitalists invested hundreds of millions in algae in the early 2000s. But the bubble burst when increasing production to a commercial scale proved impossible. One problem was algae crashes, where pests and diseases would kill entire crops. But the DOE is under pressure to meet ambitious targets for biofuel use. By 2022, the economy is supposed to consume 36 billion gallons a year. So they're not giving up on algae yet. Dan Fishman works at the DOE's Bioenergy Technology Office and says one way to give algae a second chance is to make it more pest resistant. So, so this is the place where algae goes to die at Sandia Labs. Yeah, that's right. So one thing that Sandia does is use it as a what we call a pond crash. So they'll bring in things that kill or eat algae mm -hmm. and develop strategies to resist those pathogens and predators. If we're successful, the fuels from algae are gonna be in the cars we drive, the jets we fly on, the trains that move cargo. Is this about replacing oil? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah? Yes. You know, that can be controversial, but I think if you look into the future, I don't have a crystal ball, but intrinsically, things you dig out of the ground, there's a finite supply. 